In this lecture, we are going to study about references to const. So, in the previous lecture, we have studied about the const qualifier, which is known as the constant qualifier, and we have seen what it is used for and how it works. And also before that, when we were studying about the compound types, we have studied about references. So, we have seen what are references and what they are used for. So, now we are going to study about references to const. So, let's see what are these and how they work. So, talking about references to const, as with any other object, we can bind a reference to an object of a const type. So, when we have studied about references, we saw that references are used for binding it to some other object. So, we bind references to another object that already exists. So, in the same way, we can also bind a reference to an object of a constant type. So, we have seen what are objects of constant type in the previous lecture. So, even to such objects, we can bind our references. So, to do so, we use a reference to const. So, in order to make this possible, we use something known as references to const, which is a topic that we are studying in this lecture. So, references to const means, they are references that refer to a constant type. So, they are references that will be referring to constant types. So, that is what we mean by references to const. Okay, so before we move ahead, here is a very important thing that we need to keep in mind about references to const. Unlike an ordinary reference, a reference to const cannot be used to change the object to which the reference is bound. So, this is a very important thing. So, when we studied about the normal references, we saw that once we bind a reference to a particular object, when we change the reference, it was changing the object to which it is bound as well. So, the value of the object to which it is bound also gets changed when the reference is changed. But in case of references to const, that cannot be done. We cannot use references to const for changing the object to which the reference is bound. So, this is a very important difference between the ordinary reference and a reference to const. Okay, now keeping these things in mind, let's take some examples to understand this better. So, coming to the examples, here, I am declaring a variable called ci, which is of the type integer and it is also a constant and I am initializing it to the value 1024. So, this is a normal constant type integer ci and this is the value that is stored in it. Okay, so we have studied this in the previous lecture, that is when we studied about the const qualifier. Now, here next, I am defining a reference called r1. So, how do I know it is a reference? Because it is preceded with the ampersand symbol. So, I am defining a reference called r1, which is of the type integer and it is also a constant and I am binding it to ci. So, we see that this is a reference to a const. Why? Because it is a reference and it is declared as a constant type and we are binding it to ci, which is an object that already exists and this ci is also a constant type object. So, both references and the underlying object are constants. So, this is the proper way of defining references to const. Okay, now coming to the next one. Here, I am saying r1 equal to 42. So, I am trying to manipulate this reference r1 and I am trying to put the value 42 into it. Now, this is going to throw an error. Why? Because r1 is a reference to const. So, as we already said, we cannot use references to const to change the value of the underlying object. So, if this was a normal reference like what we have discussed in the previous lectures, then what would have happened? So, just think that this r1 is a normal reference, not a constant reference. And then, if I say r1 equal to 42, what would have happened? It would change the value of ci because r1 is bound to ci. So, if both of these were not constants, then changing the value of r1 would have changed the value of ci as well. So, if I say r1 equal to 42, then ci also would have become 42. That is the behavior of the normal reference. But since r1 is a reference to a const, we cannot use it for changing the value of the underlying object. So, keep this in mind. This was a point that we discussed with importance in the previous slide. Now, next, here I am declaring a normal reference r2 of the type integer. So, I call it normal reference because it is not a reference to const. It is not a constant one. It is a normal reference of the type integer and I am trying to bind it to ci. Now, here it is going to throw an error again. Why? Because non-const reference to a const object. So, this is a non-const reference R2. But what we are trying to bind to it, which is ci, is a constant type object. 
So we are not able to bind constant object to non-const references. So keep this in mind. This is not possible. Non-const references cannot be bound to constant objects. But the vice versa is possible. That we will see when we move ahead. Okay, now we will talk about initialization and references to const. So we can bind a reference to const to a non-const object, a literal or a more general expression. So here is something that we find is different between the normal references and references to const. So in case of normal references which we have discussed in previous lectures, we have seen that normal references can only be bound to another object of the same type that already exist. So it could not be bound to literals or other things but only to other objects of the same type that already exist. But in case of references to const, it is different. We are able to bind references to const even to non-const objects and we can also bind it to literals or even a more general expression. So this is something that we see is very different between ordinary references and references to const. So let's take some examples to show this. So here in this example, I am declaring a normal variable i of the type integer and we are initializing it to 42. So it's a normal variable. Now here I am defining a reference to a const. So here the name of the reference is r1 and it is of the type integer and it is a constant and I am binding it to i. What is i? i is a normal plain integer object. So as we said, we can bind references to const to non-const objects. So that's what we are doing here. I am binding a reference to a const to a non-const object. So we can bind a const integer to a plain int object. So this is completely valid and it is possible. Now next, here I am declaring another reference to const called r2 of the type integer and I am assigning it the value 42. So we see that if this was a normal reference, this would have thrown an error because in normal references, we are able to bind it only to objects that already exist and not to literals like this. But in case of references to const, we can also bind it to some literals like this. So as we said, we can bind a reference to const even to literals. So this is also valid in case of reference to const. Okay, now next here, I am defining another reference to const called r3 of the type integer and here I am binding it to r1 into 2. So what is r1? r1 is another reference to const and we are multiplying it with 2. So we see that we are able to bind it even to general expressions like this. So we see that these things are possible in case of references to const but they are not possible in case of normal or ordinary references. Now next. Here I am declaring a normal reference. So here it is called R4. It is a normal reference or an ordinary reference of the type integer. And here I am binding it to R1 into 2. So now here it is going to throw an error. Why? Because R4 is a plain non-const reference. But R1 which is the object to which we are trying to bind it is a reference to a const. So it is not possible to bind a plain or ordinary reference to a non-const reference. So this is what we explained. So keep in mind this important thing. We are not able to bind plain or non-const references to const references, but we are able to do the vice versa. References to const, they can be bound to even non-const objects, literals or even a more general expression. So this is the important thing to keep in mind. So as we already said, the same initializations are not legal for non-const references they result in compile time errors. So we have already seen examples when we have discussed about the ordinary references that if we try to initialize them like the previous examples that we have seen, they are going to throw compile time errors. So the question now is why do they work for const references? So we have seen that they are working for const references but for ordinary references they are not working. So why is that? We need to find that out. So in order to find that out, we will try to understand this behavior by taking a look at what happens when we bind a reference to an object of a different type. So in order to understand the behavior that we have seen in the previous examples, we are going to take a look at what will happen in the underlying code when we try to bind a reference to an object of a different type. Okay, so if we are trying to bind a reference of an object to a different type in case of a normal reference or an ordinary reference, we saw that it was throwing errors. But in case of references to const, 
Let's see what happens. So for example, if we write a code like this, double dval equal to 3.14. So here I am defining a variable called dval, which is of the type double, and it is having the value 3.14. So we are initializing it to 3.14. Okay, so this is a normal definition of a double type. And below this, I am defining a reference to a const called ri. So this is a reference to a const. It is of the type integer, it is a constant. And to this, I am trying to assign this dval. That means I am trying to bind dval to this reference to const ri. So if this was an ordinary reference, it would have thrown an error. Why? Because the reference is of the type integer, but the object to which we are trying to bind it, which is dval, is of the type double. So there is a type mismatch. But in case of reference to const, this will not throw an error. Instead, the compiler is going to transform the code into something like this. So the compiler transforms the code to something like this. So when we write this, what happens in the background is, the compiler creates a temporary integer variable called temp, and to it, it is storing this dval. So this dval is stored into this temporary variable of the type integer. Now, we know that dval is actually a double, and it is having some decimal value but temp is an integer. So when we store this 3.14 into temp, what will happen? It will convert it to its equivalent integer. That means this decimal part will be truncated or ignored and only 3 will be stored into this temp. So the compiler creates a temporary integer from the double. So that 3 will be stored here and then that temp will be bound to the reference to const. So this thing, const int ampersand ri, to this we will be binding this temp now, not the dval directly. So we see that now the problem is solved. So how is the problem solved? Though they were of different types, the compiler converted the dval to an integer by storing it to an integer variable called temp and that temp is what is bound to ri. So if you understand this example properly, then you can get an idea of why those examples that we took in the previous slides are legal in case of references to cons. So this thing doesn't happen in case of ordinary references, but for references to cons, this is what happens in the background. And that is why those things that we saw in the example are possible in case of references to cons. Okay, so that was about the initialization and references to cons. Alright, so with that, I hope you have understood what we mean by references to const and how they are different from normal or ordinary references. And we have also seen how the code works in the background when there is a type mismatch as well. So with that, I hope you have understood the topic of references to const. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.